Welcome to NX for Manufacturing Tech Tips. We're here today with Mike Menino. Mike Menino is a CAM, one of our CAM experts on the East Coast in the United States, and he's put together a sample reuse library of work holding devices, and he's going to show us how to use it. Mike, welcome. Thank you, Aaron. In NX, we give you the ability to have a reuse library out of the box. We have standard nuts and bolts and uh, other hardware. I can show you a quick example of what that would look like. I want to go ahead and take a inch bolt, a hex head bolt, out of the reuse library. I simply drag and drop it into my cam assembly, choose whatever size diameter I need and the length of it, and go ahead and assemble that into my assembly. We came up with a uh, cam reuse library sample where we have hardware for setups, whether we want to use an angle plate or bushings or C-clamps. If I needed to clamp something to an angle plate, I can simply drag in my C-clamp. Whether I wanted a small, medium, or large C-clamp, or whether it's standard, extended length, or the deep length. And since not every part's one inch, we would need to adjust that. So let's make that maybe 1.5 inches. And the clamp opens up to an inch and a half. <coughs> well, we also have some work holding devices. Uh, a three jaw chuck, an air chuck, collar adapters for your uh, CNC lathes, milling vise and some tombstones. Let's go ahead and close this and show an example of what, how well this all works. So if I have a turning job here and I need to put my three-jaw chuck on it, well first thing I might want to do is go ahead and find out the size of the diameter I'm banking on and 1.375 so that's two and three-quarter inch diameter chuck jaws I need. Simply come in here and go to my three-jaw chuck, drag that assembly in, I'll go ahead and get a rough size of what I want and then I'll come in here and adjust it to 2.75. Chuck jaws open up to the 2.75 diameter. Let's go ahead and just add that to my manufacturing assembly. At this point I can go straight into manufacturing. I could even add the pieces of the chuck jaw as collision check geometry so our tool does not hit and go right to all my standard turning practices. For a square part we want to hold on the vise. I come down here and grab my vise. Drag, simply drag into my assembly. We have here, whether it's 6, 8, or 10 inch vise, some standard predefined step jaws. Okay. Whether we want the end stop on the left side, the right side, or maybe I'm doing an end for end program where I'm flipping it over at the cycle stop, I would, might want an end stop on both sides. Or if I'm just centering the uh, raw material, I might want none, no end stop. But for this particular job, let's go with a left end stop. And I know my part length is four inches, so I'm going to change that to a four inch opening. My jaws open up to exactly four inches. And I'm going to use assembly constraints from two always. Once again, I can go right into straight to manufacturing here. I could take it into drafting and show exactly how it's going to look when it gets out to the shop floor in the machine tool. Another example might be using the collet adapter. My air chuck. 
change to whatever cowl size you need. This is one inch. And simply assemble that to my component. Okay to that. And we're ready to start machining the part. Now to assemble, to install all this, <coughs> the attached, the attached uh, zip file contains all the components that you need. Uh, you might want to create a top level assembly uh, folder called My Reuse Library, someplace where everybody in your organization can get to it. There will be a zip file called Cam Reuse. Simply extract it here. It will create a folder called Cam Reuse Library and subfolders called Hardware for Setups and Work Holding. Then in your File, Utilities, Customer Default sections, you go down in under Gateway down to Reuse Library and here's where you type in the path to where those files exist. Notice the backslashes. They're opposite from Windows. And that's it.